Hello everyone, so Panel Theories here and welcome back to another video and welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, be sure to click subscribe and click the bell to get notifications on all upcoming Sopranos content as we are really close to hitting 50,000 subscribers. And be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. The links will be in the description below. Well, let's talk about it. After many uploads of ignoring the topic, procrastinating, as well as just not wanting to upload my thoughts about the infamous ending due to the amount of videos covering the topic, I thought it was about time to share my thoughts about The Sopranos' final episode, Made in America. By now, we all know that the series' creator, David Chase, has stated that there is no clear answer to whether Tony lives or dies at Holston's diner in the final episode. And part of this continuous speculation years after its initial airing is what makes the series so special, as we're still speculating the fate of television's most loved mob boss. But when we look at the final episode, the evidence is all here, as it proves that Tony is unfortunately dead. The episode begins with Tony sleeping, but ironically, it looks like Tony is dead in a coffin as we also hear organ music, a foreshadowing nod that death is coming for Tony sooner rather than later. Not only does the episode have this theme of a clear demise and death coming for Tony, but it also has that sense of an end for America. As when Tony meets with Agent Harris, his priorities have now shifted. From focusing on organized crime and bringing down a man like Tony Soprano to justice, as we saw this throughout a large portion of the series, to now catching terrorists and stopping potential terrorist attacks. As the reason why he was late for his meeting with Tony was a local scare at an airport. After all, this was the state of fear that America was in after the 9-11 terrorist attacks. If you would like to see how The Sopranos is a representation of America throughout the early 2000s, I did a video on it and it will be linked below. Later, we also see the theme of death reminiscent when Tony is seen peeling an orange at his safe house, a clear homage to the death of Don Vito Corleone from The Godfather. Sticking with the theme of death, we also see the funeral of Bobby Bacala. Death is also visible throughout the usage of wind, as wind is a symbol of death. Not only do we see this during the funeral scene for Bobby, with there being a heavy wind presence, but we also saw this in the first season of The Sopranos, where in the 12th episode titled Isabella, we see an immense amount of wind present throughout the episode to symbolize a possible death coming for Tony. This, of course, would later be the assassination attempt that Tony survived. And while at the remembrance feast for Bobby, the theme of death continues, as Polly quotes a Roman Catholic church chant from the 1300s. In the midst of death, we are in life. But he reverses the chant, as the liturgy revolves around themes of death and forgiveness. As this could possibly showcase those who are looking for forgiveness from their sins, such as Tony. And also at this dinner scene, we also see AJ getting worked up over the Iraq war that was taking place during the time of the episode, and Carlo Jr. wanting to go kill some Iraq soldiers. Later on in the episode, we also see Polly talking to Tony about the time he saw the Virgin Mary at the Bada Bang, as the afterlife was a constant reminder throughout the series, because there was no escaping death whether it was Christopher visiting hell or Tony's near-death experience during his coma dream. And we see the fears of death continue with Polly being afraid of taking over the April crew, as the disarray within the crew resulted in Tony calling it a Chinese fire drill, because everyone who's been a part of the crew has died. From Jackie with cancer, Richie getting shot by Janice, Gigi's heart disease, Ralphie getting whacked by Tony, Eugene taking his own life, to Vito's tragic death. It's almost as if the crew itself is cursed. The episode itself is dark, dingy, and cold. Tony meets with Agent Harris during a winter storm. His safe house is dirty, old, and full of mold. The senior home that Junior is in seems empty and gray. The sit-down that George set up for both Tony and New York is cold, grim, and takes place in an abandoned warehouse. Even from the clothes the characters wear, everything just seems dull and lacks variety. There's not much color throughout the entirety of the episode, and this proves how far the Sopranos have come since the bright, vibrant culture of season one to now. 
The theme of the inevitability of death for Tony that we saw throughout the entirety of the series, it's more present here in the final episode than we ever see it. When Tony and his crew are at their safe house, the envelopes that he's receiving from those who owe him money are on the lighter side. His crew itself has shrunken so fast, gone are the days where his crew is being supported by hundreds of soldiers and multiple capos. His dearest friends and most loyal earners are gone. As Vito was killed by New York, Christopher is dead thanks to Tony, Eugene decides to take his own life, and Silvio is in a coma. Patsy also says that a lot of his clients are taking their action to New York meaning business isn't what it used to be for the Soprano family. And later, we see Tony's crew dwindling down even more, as Carlo didn't show up for his meeting with Polly, and we later find out that he flipped. And when Tony goes and sees Silvio in the hospital, there's this state of fear on the face of Tony that we've never seen before. It's here where Tony realizes he has finally come face to face with the reality of the Mafia, something that we heard Tony talk about with Dr. Melfi earlier in the series. Still endings for a guy like me high profile guy, dead or in a can. There's an interesting scene where Tony and his lawyer are having lunch at the Bing, where he starts going on about an 80 to 90% chance Tony will get indicted and that Carlo is talking. His lawyer says that it's not like we haven't envisioned this day, meaning that Tony knew all along his end would come down the road, that all things must come to an end. We see this theme of a slow and painful demise continue in the next scene, where New York's famous Little Italy, that was once covered over 40 square blocks, has now been reduced to just one row of shops and cafes, as the tour guide says. Famous Little Italy, it once covered over 40 square blocks, but has now been reduced to one row of shops and this represents the power that the Italian Mafia once had in cities like New York and New Jersey has now been dwindled and the mob life in America will never be the same, nor as powerful as it once was as we saw in the beginning of the series. This theme is also visible during this same scene where Butchie walks just a few short minutes out of Little Italy and winds up in Chinatown, showcasing the downfall of the Mafia in America. Even when Tony reflects on the development of houses around Johnny Sack's former house and how there was nothing but cornfields surrounding the area. Oh, five, six years ago when Johnny Sack bought this house, this was all cornfields here. There's this sort of sense on dwelling on the past, or reflecting on what once was, as we also saw this with AJ when he destroys his car by parking in leaves. And the scene afterwards with Carmela and Tony reminds us of the AJ we used to see throughout the series when he was just a youngster constantly getting in trouble. When mobsters would come and go throughout the series, everyone sort of continued on with life never dwelling on the past or wondering what could have been, showcasing life continuing on despite the uncertainty that lies within the Mafia. And we also see this with Janice after becoming a widow after the death of her husband and Bobby, but also in the lyrics that we hear when AJ's in the car with his girlfriend, or with Carmela astounded at the amount of mail once the family arrives back at their house. As this shows no one will ever care, and when Tony constantly promised Carmela about taking care of her, if God forbid something were to happen to Tony, this proves that nobody will care even when Tony is gone. After watching this final episode with a close eye, everything is so empty, hollow, depressing, grim, and is truly the complete and bitter end for Tony, but also everyone surrounding him. Between his family and crew, this is it. Polly is alone, Carmela will now become a widow just like every one of her friends, and Meadow and AJ will have no father. There's a sense of loneliness in this final episode. Even the production company that AJ works for is called Lone Wolves. As these themes are also present during the final scene between Junior and Tony. Junior's brain is empty and hollow as he cannot remember much or even who Tony is for that matter. The final episode showcases how far the Sopranos have come and the depressive culture that surrounded America during the 2000s. From the upbeat and happy lives that fill the Soprano home, to the emptiness and counting widows we see throughout the series. Death will always be a part of life and there's no escaping it, no matter how hard Tony tried throughout the entirety of the series. Looking back on the cut to black scene, it all makes sense, as it echoes what Bobby Bacala said to Tony while out on the water in Soprano home movies, about not hearing the gunshots if you were to happen to get killed by a gun. You probably don't even hear it when it happens, right? It's your friend in there, on the wall. <laughs>
as well as Silvio not hearing the gunshots until after the shots were fired with his dinner with Jerry. So it makes sense that Tony didn't hear the gunshots get fired from possibly the man in the members only jacket, thus resulting in a cut to black. And when Tony wakes up from his coma, the screen is white, which symbolizes life and black symbolizes death, which is the complete opposite of what we get here in this final scene. Endless white, endless nothing, the sleep of death, the big sleep, He's talking about his own death, just yet to come, but will come. I thought black was dead. White too. And sticking with the man in the members only jacket, we saw Eugene wear a similar jacket in the first episode of season six. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this guy, members only. And when Tony crushes Eugene and his wife's dream of moving to Florida, we see him take his own life as the man in the members only jacket could be Eugene getting revenge on Tony from beyond the grave. And during this final scene, the man in the members only jacket goes to the bathroom, a clear nod to the Godfather when Michael Corleone goes to the bathroom to get the gun behind the toilet to later kill the men who killed his father, as this just so happens to be Tony's favorite scene and something we saw in his test dream. All right, cause every time we watch Godfather, when Michael Corleone shoots those guys in the restaurant, those assholes who tried to kill his dad, you sit there with your fucking bowl of ice cream and you say it's your favorite scene of all time. And Tony dying from a gunshot to the back of the head is something that he said could possibly happen in the first episode of the series. Hey, goddammit, I'm serious. The wrong person finds out about this and I get a steel jacket and the person right in the back of the head. Even the songs labeled on the jukebox machine reminisce on what once was and this sense of death, with Those Were the Days by Mary Hopkin, Only the Strong Survive by Jerry Butler, and I've Gotta Be Me by Tony Bennett, which has a line that states a lonely place. This showcases that the end has finally come for Tony. What are your thoughts about the series' ending? Let me know down in the comment section below. For more Sopranos content, keep it locked here, right here on this channel.